So when I was a kid, having a conversation with your computer went a little something like this. You would lie down on the couch and vent about all the problems in your life or whatever. Then you'd have to get up, type your own response, press enter, and listen back to the insights that it had to offer. Pathetic, right? Fast forward 25 years and voice recognition, a technology kind of like VR, where someone is always claiming that they've made a big breakthrough and it turns out to still be kind of crap, is finally gaining widespread adoption. So early forms of voice recognition had very limited vocabularies. Some of the first systems from the 1950s could only recognize about 10 words. And even about 30 years later, that number had grown to only around 20,000, which may seem like a lot, but remember that the English language has over 1 million words. On top of that, early software couldn't predict what words you were trying to say by using context. So to these programs, it was just as likely that you were trying to say bacon and legs as bacon and eggs. Fortunately though, we finally got computers in the late 1980s and early 1990s that had more storage and processing power, allowing them to comprehend more natural speech instead of forcing you to talk like this so they could understand. And nowadays, technologies like Siri and Cortana don't rely on a limited dictionary or the relatively weak processor in your device at all. Instead, they use huge cloud databases that store millions millions of words and phrases and have lightning fast CPUs to understand what you mean with much more precision. Google's speech recognition software even learns from real search engine strings and can also recognize a variety of accents. So you can use it whether you're from Eastern Canada or Southern Texas. But can the power of the cloud do more? When you ask your phone for a sports score, how does it know to tell you how your favorite team is doing instead of where to find a spork store? Well, instead of listening to just one word at a time, and I alluded to this before, it listens to other words as well for context and uses probabilities to determine what you're trying to say. This is a pretty involved process that uses complex mathematical models. Google, for example, uses an artificial neural network that functions similarly to your own brain using digital neurons to learn what people are saying. And you can actually see this in action as Google now often changes what it thinks you said on the fly as you continue speaking. And it gets better. Greater amounts of processing power have enabled everything from real-time translation to being able to talk to game characters with a VR headset to emotion tracking in which a computer can use the timing and pitch of your voice to figure out how you're feeling. We're even seeing it deployed in fighter aircraft so pilots can concentrate on mission objectives instead of fiddling with cockpit switches. But although voice recognition has come a really long way, its proliferation has presented us with some new challenges. One big concern has been finding ways to filter out background noise so you'll still get correct results even if you're standing in the middle of a busy street. And speaking of standing in public, another massive issue is privacy. Many types of voice recognition software improve upon themselves by learning user habits. And combined with cloud processing, we've already seen some real Concerns such as with Samsung smart TVs earlier this year, which had a privacy policy which some people believed allowed Samsung to monitor your living room conversations. So while the tech has great potential, we also need to make sure it won't leave us all feeling like Winston Smith from 1984. And on the subject of 1984, you know what I don't miss about 1984? Ugly websites. That's right, squarespace.com is where to go if you want to create a simple, powerful, beautiful website. They've got 24-7 tech support via live chat and email to help you out. It starts at only $8 a month and you get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for the year. And what's great about it is it's just easy to use. You'll end up with a site that looks great on a computer, on a mobile device, wherever the case may be, just by selecting one of their templates and populating it with text and images to your liking. You can build all kinds of different sites, whether it's uh, commerce or whether it's a blog or, a, or like an art portfolio or whatever the case may be. In fact, you could even have an art portfolio where you also sell stuff. Commerce is included with everything. And the best part is you can start for free. You get 14 days for free over at squarespace.com. And if you use offer code Linus, you'll save 10% off your first 
purchase. So thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring Fast As Possible. All right, so that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked this video, do that thing. If you disliked it, do the other thing. Don't forget to check out our other channels, like Channel Super Fun, where we do like crazy banana stuff, like throw darts at pizzas and then eat pizzas covered in Marmite or hot sauce or whatever. It's, it's good stuff. Check it out up there. And I think that pretty much wraps it up, right? Don't forget to leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fast As Possible videos. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.